Beep, beep. What is up, ninjas? My name is Sam World, and I've spent so much time trying to recreate this base that it got close, but not close enough. It's not identical to it. So today, we're going to be talking about how to create baselines similar to Fisher. I've invested so much time this past month trying to recreate it, guys. I can't figure out what that vibe is. So I'm making this video to teach you guys how to do it. And if you guys want to continue my work, my research into this base, you guys can, you know, by all means do it. And if you get closer than it to me, then please let me know in the comments because I've been trying to figure it out all right guys so that was a depressive intro but i feel a lot better now because we got so close to it i invested another five hours into it guys and i always want to give it my best with these type of tutorials that you guys request that you guys want because you know you guys support what i do and i want to return the favor always with these videos to teach you guys how to make music to to unravel the mysteries of sound design of, of mixing of music production and while some people might hate on some of the videos i make because of the information they don't agree with it in all honesty, that information I sometimes provide is aha moments for me that just helped me improve tremendously during times where I felt like shit and I didn't know why my bass wasn't sounding so fat and vice versa, guys. Now, this preset, I am going to include it in the Dirty Bird Soundbank coming out uh, this coming Friday. It's coming out. Um, it's going to be like $20, I think, or $15, guys. Uh, so if you guys want to support it, make sure. But let's get straight into this tutorial. So this preset is one oh my god dude there are so many ways you can go wrong with it like that but i'm gonna show you guys everything again and and give you guys the purpose of why i decided to go with that okay so the first thing is we're gonna be using two saws now the reason i went with a saw is because as i would look at the fisher track i had it up on ableton i would zoom in on it and you can sometimes see the waveforms it looked like it was kind of like a variant of a saw that was kind of distorted to a point so i was like i'm gonna go with saws now, I did that a couple of times, but I went wrong various times, as you're going to see. So, once we have that, I'm going to detune them to hell, and that's the tutorial. Okay, I'm just kidding. That That is not the tutorial. Okay, so, the key thing here is, is that we're going to go to part B now and put white noise, as it's going to give us that sound that we want, as well as you can hear a little bit of white noise in the Fisher preset as well, in the track. Uh, we're going to put one. Alright, it's going to give it a little bit of dirt. Um, and then from here, we're going to utilize a band pass. Now, the reason I go with a band pass here, guys, is because it looks like a titty, but at, in its life. But um, it focuses in on one frequency. When I was referencing the Fisher track, I would grab little parts where the bass was playing by itself. And I would utilize a span on it so that I could see what frequencies it was covering. And it was covering the mid lows, the mid highs, but it wouldn't really have that much high frequency in it. So the band pass is perfect for that because it focuses in on one frequency. Now we're going to put part B to come in here as well so that way the, the, the noise comes in through there and part B we're going to get rid of that here so that nothing comes out. I'm talking about the filter by the way. So from here we're going to put a cutoff A modulation to open it up and this is where it can go very wrong because watch if I just decided to you can see what happens there. So what I'm going to do is fast attack fast decay. And you can see if I do too much of it, you start to get that rest and kind of sound, which his track doesn't have. This is where the recreation really took a hard toll because I was like, how the fuck is he doing this? But in a way that is not sounding like that. So there are two things that were aha moments for me here. The first one is that this saw had to be up an octave. And it had to have the retrigger off. Next thing was the decay values, of course. And of course, we have to have it as here as well. So we're going to copy that and we're going to paste it up there as well as to the white noise as well. Maybe a little bit more of decay. Bit of distortion. Mono Legato, of course. I'm going to get rid of the uh, the, uh, the EQ there. Maybe a bit of drive will help. Here the detunement value. Now, the key thing here is, of course, to use an EQ on this and get rid of all the lows because, again, we don't want any of these lows. 
We want everything below, I believe, 190 cut off. So that's what we're going to do. Next thing, I'm going to put a camel crusher just as a way to process, but I don't recommend it because it does, um, it is a bit harsh. You can see it kind of auto pans a bit because, again, the retricks aren't there. So every, every wavetable is starting at a different position, all of the eight damn sauce or 16. So we need to widen it so that it kind of has that correlation there. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, and then we're going to apply a bit of reverb there. Uh, maybe before the Camel Crusher. Let's see how that sounds like. And then from there, it's just a lot of fine tuning how you want it to sound. Yeah, and th here's the thing with this. This is as close as we're going to get. I'm sure if you guys want to go in and grab the preset and, and mess with it, you can. But as you guys can see, it's a very tough you want because of all the programming and all the little details in it. Um, the thing here that I learned from this, though, was the fact that, you know, the bandpass will give us that cut that we need whenever we want a filter to have that. Um, that's where we went with it. Maybe I'm using too much of the envelope here. Maybe I'm being too light on it. I don't know. But that's as close as we're going to get, guys. And I'm really happy with the end result. Honestly, uh, again, I would have preferred to have the identical sound. But a lot of times it's very hard because there's also a master going on. There's also a lot of things that play a big role in the track. Um, and, and, of course, the mixing of the track as well plays a huge role. But this is close and it will get us close. It sounds like, again, kind of like a low trombone there. So maybe a bit of chorus would help as well. But I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. That's as close as we're going to get, guys. It took me a long time to get to here. And if you guys can take this information and if you want to recreate the bass a bit better, and let me know in the comments if you get it. And I hope you guys have fun with this one because, honestly, it's a very sick, badass bass that if you take that bandpass off, it sounds... <laughs> Alright ninjas, you guys take care, I'm fucking happy Now I can go and enjoy my day And uh, whatever's rest of it But you guys hit good, have fun Enjoy your weekend, and I'll see you guys on Monday For a brand new video